Hi everybody, I'm so glad to be back to read the final couple chapters of The Skin I'm In with you. I just want to start by saying that I am so incredibly proud of all of you. Online learning has been a unique challenge and a big adaptation for everybody. And I'm just very impressed by the way that you've chosen to engage with this. And at the end of this video and this assignment, you've completed an entire novel at home and an entire quarter at home. And as much as it breaks my heart that I couldn't be in person with you, um, I'm just overwhelmingly impressed by each and every one of you. And I'm so excited to finally read the resolution of this book. So get your copy ready. You can pause me for now. And when you press play, we are going to finish Sharon Flake's The Skin I'm In. Chapter 31. I go to school the next day. Miss Saunders has arranged for me to come back. She asks me to meet her in her classroom before school starts. When I arrive, Char is there. Miss Saunders is not wearing a suit. She's got on blue jeans. Miss Saunders is saying something, but I can't make out just what. She and Char are talking at the same time. Char's going on and on about how she didn't have nothing to do with messing up Miss Saunders' room. Miss Saunders is telling me to tell her the whole truth. I want to tell her that the truth will get my butt kicked good. That if I open my big mouth, ain't nothing she or Mama can do to keep Charlize from getting me back. Only I don't say nothing, I just keep my mouth shut. Charlize looks scared, like she's gonna cry. I never seen that before. I figured that maybe she didn't have no tears. All the while, Char's eyes are saying, I'd better take the blame or else. I am so tired of being scared of doing what other folks want me to do. Char throws mean words at me, words as hard as bricks. You better not punk out on me, she says. Tears start to roll from my eyes. Malika. You know what Juju will do to me if I get kicked out of school. Juju will kick Char's butt good. That's another reason why I can't tell. I'm rocking and thinking and crying. Miss Saunders is very quiet. She's listening and watching. She puts a gentle hand on my shoulder. If I get in trouble for you, you're going to have to move to another neighborhood, Char is saying. I keep on rocking and crying. I'm thinking about the boys who tried to kiss me and the ones I whipped when I helped John John. I start thinking about Akilma too. Hmm, I wonder how all these thoughts are going to help Malika. Now Miss Saunders has her arm around me and it sure feels good to have it here. She's letting Char speak her mind. All I done for you, Char says. You gonna leave me to dry like out to dry like this? Wait till later, you ugly, stupid, black thing. Call me by my name, I hear Akilma say. And I scream it out too. Call me by my name. I am not ugly. I am not stupid. I am Malika Madison. And yeah, I'm black, real black. And if you don't like me, too bad, because black is the skin I'm in, I yell. No matter what you think, Charlize Jones, you're ten times worse. I would never force someone to burn down a classroom or pick on kids weaker than me or say words so mean they make people bleed inside. I'm rocking and crying and rocking. You the one who pushed me to mess up Miss Saunders' room and you were in on it too. You and the twins, I say feeling relieved. Charlize gives me a hard look. She pushes past Miss Saunders and me and makes her way to the door. <laughs> look at you too. Two ugly faced losers, she says. Miss Saunders, don't even stop Char. She lets her go. Then Miss Saunders hugs me to her and I feel safe inside. Now, before I go on to chapter 32, if you're trying to find a quote to summarize the resolution, the one that I chose is from the chapter I just read. Of course, you're welcome to choose a different one. Just make sure whatever you're um, choosing, you're able to explain it and um, let me know how it solves her problem. All right, here we go. Chapter 32, we're going to finish up here. A week passes. Raina and Razie have been suspended and nobody's seen Char. When the twins return, they tell everybody that Juju sent Char to live with her grandparents in Alabama. Kids are still saying how jive I am for squealing on Char, but I don't care. Char can't hurt me now. 
Mr. Pajoli says my office job is over, that I've paid enough dues by telling the truth about Char. I hunched my shoulders up like I don't care about the office, but deep down inside I feel kind of bad. I was starting to really like it. And I missed working there when I was suspended. As I'm leaving the office, Caleb is standing by my locker. He turns all red when I ask what he's doing. I was just leaving, he says, handing me a purple letter with gold writing on it. Wait till I'm gone before you open it, all right? I nod and watch him go to class. I duck into the girls' room, drop the backpack on the floor, and open the letter real slow. Spearmint. It smells like spearmint gum. I take the gum out and put it in my mouth before I read the letter. It's a poem. For me. To Malika, my sweet, dark, chocolate candy girl. Would you be my almond joy, my chocolate chip, my Hershey kiss, my sweet, dark, chocolate butter crisp? Hand in hand, we'd walk to class and sit and talk in sweet green grass. Roller coaster way up high, pick moonbeams from out the sky. Would you be my almond joy, my chocolate chip, my Hershey kiss, my sweet dark chocolate butter crisp? Caleb's poem makes me cry. It is so sweet. I look at my face in the mirror and smile. I promise myself to hang Caleb's poem on the wall with daddy's and the one from the library. On the way to class, I see Caleb. He's still red faced. Even his ears are red. My heart is beating fast, but I go up to him anyway. That is the nicest thing anybody ever did for me. I say with this goofy smile on my face. And we stand there. Me twisting a pencil in my hands and him twisting one of his braids over and over again. You two supposed to be somewhere? Mr. Braxton, the gym teacher asks. Yeah, we both say. I'm going to Miss Saunders' class, I say. And I'm on my way to math class, says Caleb. Well, get there. Now, Mr. Braxton's pointing. I'll walk you to Miss Saunders' room. It's on my way, Caleb says, still twisting his hair. I take his letter and put it in my backpack and we walk down the hall together. I close my eyes and second for a second and take a deep breath. Caleb always smells so fresh and clean. That's another thing I like about him. When I finally walk into class, everybody's staring at me like I got two heads. I'm late, but Miss Saunders doesn't make an issue out of it today. Class is in the detention room while Miss Saunders' room is being repaired. Miss Saunders is giving us 20 pages of Alibaba and the 40 Thieves to read by tomorrow and telling us she's been easy on us so far. But things are about to heat up. Welcome back, Miss Madison, Miss Saunders says, giving me a wink. Class wouldn't be the same unless you were late. Everybody laughs and turns my way. Yeah, John John says, welcome back. Yay, the end. So let's take a quick summary of the book we've read so far. We started out with this conflict. Our main character, Malika, had low self-esteem. People teased her specifically about the color of her skin, and she really didn't seem to have any confidence, strength, or courage to stand up for herself. Throughout the book, we watch her and how she wants to change her situation and find some confidence, and she struggles to find strength, and she struggles with which relationships will help her with her self-confidence. Um, ultimately, her relationship with Char, who's kind of a bad influence on her, leads her to accidentally burn down Miss Saunders' classroom, which causes her to really reevaluate things. So, um, before we get to the resolution, Malika really regrets her decision and she struggles with what to do next. She knows that she made some poor choices, but she's starting to find strength finally. And so now that we're at the resolution, we need to ask ourselves questions like, how has the character changed from beginning to end? In the beginning, we find a really weak character who really doesn't do anything when people make fun of her. And at the end, we find her standing up to Char, who really is the person she's most afraid of. We have to ask ourselves, how did our character achieve their goal? Her goal was to find confidence. I would assert or claim 
that the way she found confidence was through her writing because even as she finally stands up to char she says it was a kilma's voice in her first and then we're asking ourselves what did our character learn on her journey she finally stands up and feels proud of herself she's proud of who she is she's proud of the skin that she is in um, which is ultimately going to become our theme as well as you look at malika's lesson is something that we can apply to our own selves also we are who we are, and it's something to be proud of and not ashamed of, which has also been the theme of all of your readings up until this point, even the common lit ones. And hopefully um, all of you are proud of who you are. I certainly am. So now that we have ended our novel, I just want to take one more second to say I'm so happy that I have been your teacher this year and even this quarter, and I'm so impressed by all you've done and accomplished. You make me quite proud. Um, I hope that you finish quarter four strong. I hope you have an excellent summer and I desperately hope that I get to see your faces again in the hallway next fall. Bye guys.